If you're running free NAS, you probably know that TrueNAS Core is just around the corner. And while this does mean that the name FreeNAS will be going away, it doesn't mean that any of the features that you're used to will be going away. With these two products merging, you'll end up gaining more features and more features faster. And so you might be thinking to yourself, how do I upgrade or migrate from FreeNAS to TrueNAS? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna cover today. Hey, welcome back. So I'm Techno Tim, and today we're going to talk about upgrading to TrueNAS. As a quick reminder, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So if you want to continue the conversation about TrueNAS there, we can. So let's talk about upgrading to TrueNAS. As you all know, FreeNAS as we know it is going away. The next iteration we see of FreeNAS will be TrueNAS Core. FreeNAS will be joining the TrueNAS family. So TrueNAS will end up having two products now. It will have TrueNAS Core, which is the community edition, and then TrueNAS Enterprise, which is, of course, the enterprise edition. And while this may just seem like a name change to most of us, it's actually a huge optimization to bring these two products together so that the teams working on this products can just manage one big code base. And this means faster features, better hardware support, and unified documentation. So overall, this is a good thing. So what does that mean for us running FreeNAS at home? Well, there's a simple upgrade path and I'm going to show you. So with that out of the way, let's hop right in. First, you want to make sure you have your FreeNAS server up and running. I'm running FreeNAS version 11.3, but any version will do. Next, before upgrading, I like to make sure I'm on the latest version of this major release, so 11-ish. You can do that by checking for updates and making sure you're on 11 something. Next, you'll probably want to look at your pools. You'll want to make sure that your pools are in good shape. This involves checking to make sure that they are healthy, that they don't need resilvering, and that all drives are online. It's also a good idea to check to make sure that there aren't any errors. Now, if you notice any errors here, or drives are offline, or they need to be resilvered, you should probably address that before upgrading. And while we're talking about pools, it's probably a good idea to make sure that this data is backed up somewhere else locally. This will ensure that if something goes wrong, you can restore that data really quickly. And offsite backups are a good idea too. But either way, make sure that you have a copy of this data somewhere in case something goes wrong. Next, you'll wanna check all of your services and make sure that they're running. You can choose to stop any of these services, but we'll take care of that later. If you're running any plugins or jails, you wanna make sure that those are running properly too. And the same goes for any virtual machines you might have running. I recommend shutting down all of your virtual machines if they are running. Next, we should probably back up our configuration for this server. You'll find this in System General. Here, we'll want to click the Save Config button and choose whether or not you want to export your passwords and your pool encryption keys. And then Save. Now that we have that done, we'll want to shut down our FreeNAS server. This is because I'm going to do an offline upgrade. I highly recommend an offline upgrade for a major version upgrade. This ensures that no services are running and that no one's accessing these shares, which means you should let everyone in your house know that they won't be able to access these shares while we're doing the upgrade, but it shouldn't take that long. So once we've done all that, let's shut down our FreeNAS server. And you'll want to say goodbye to the shark. We get a new logo. Then we'll want to download TrueNAS. That's as easy as going out to TrueNAS.com and downloading the ISO. Once you've downloaded the ISO, you'll have to decide on how we're going to install this. If you've installed TrueNAS on bare metal, you want to create a bootable USB drive. And that's as simple as using something like Etcher to flash a USB drive. Or if you have IPMI, you can mount the ISO using something like Dell's iDRAC. Or you could burn a CD if anyone does that anymore. But either way, if you have a bare metal FreeNAS install, you'll need to get the media on there somehow. But if you virtualize FreeNAS, you'll want to upload the ISO to your virtualization server. Then we'll just boot to TrueNAS. When TrueNAS boots, you'll be greeted with a couple of options. This may look like we're installing a fresh copy, but don't worry. We're going to choose number one. So we want to boot the TrueNAS installer. And now we'll see we have the option to install slash upgrade. Let's choose that. Here we'll need to choose the target drive for TrueNAS. This is going to be the same drive that FreeNAS is installed on. You want to be sure to choose the right one. For me, it's VTBD0. Choose that. And here it's asking if we want to do a fresh install or upgrade. We want to upgrade. Here I choose to install in a new boot environment. And next is just a confirmation. And now we'll just wait for the upgrade to finish. This may take some time depending on your hardware. Next, you might get a prompt about upgrading your database file. 
This is totally normal and you should just hit OK here. And now we're done with the upgrade. You want to be sure to remove your boot media, then hit OK here. And on first boot, we can see we upgraded to TrueNAS. You can see the new logo. It's no shark, of course. But this is a good sign that we've upgraded to TrueNAS. So let's just continue to boot. Now I've noticed the first boot after the upgrade can take some time, but just be patient. And after that first boot, you might notice that it's going to reboot on its own. This is totally normal and expected. And now it's fully migrated and up. Let's go check out the new UI. So after going out to the IP address, we can see the new sign-in screen. And we signed in, and we're welcome to TrueNAS Core in this little modal here. Let's click Get Started, and here's our new dashboard. And you can see we're running TrueNAS Core. Now the first thing you'll probably notice is that we have a notification here, right on this bell. And this is typical. This is a warning telling us that there are new feature flags available for our ZFS pool. But we'll check that out here in a second. So for now, let's just dismiss it. And let's go check on our pools. Those are pretty important. And we see our pool here, and it's healthy. If we go into our shares, our shares are still there. If we go into services, you want to be sure that all your services are started again. And the same with your plugins and your jails. You'll want to make sure that those are up and running if you have them configured. And in virtual machines, if you have virtual machines running, now's a good time to start them. And now would be a good time to check your shares too. So you just want to verify you can get to those shares over the network. And then I recommend checking for an update too. So if you click update and check for updates, you'll want to be sure that you're on the latest version. And that's just in case you upgraded offline using an older version of the ISO. But as you can see here, there's nothing available for me. Okay, so let's address the pool issue. So if you remember, we had a notification saying that there are newer flags available for our ZFS pool. And if we look at TrueNAS documentation, they mention this right here under upgrading a ZFS pool. Now they mention a few things about upgrading this pool. First, they say it's a one-way street, so there's no going back after you do this. Next, they tell you to back up all of your data first, which we should have done already. This is just in case something goes wrong. And lastly, they say that this is totally optional and that you should only do it if you require newer features of ZFS. They also mention in other documentation that you might want to wait a couple weeks to do this, just to make sure that the upgrade was okay. That way, you can downgrade to a prior version of TrueNAS and not pin to this version after we upgrade our ZFS pool. Okay, so now that you've been warned, we're going to upgrade our ZFS pool. It's pretty simple. So if we go back into our pool, we can just click the cog wheel here and we can choose Upgrade Pool. You'll get a warning stating the same thing I just told you, so we'll say Confirm here and we'll click Continue and just like that, it's upgraded. And now we can see that the notification went away. So congratulations, we upgraded to TrueNAS. Now I know there are other ways to upgrade to TrueNAS, but I prefer the offline installation for a few reasons. First, I don't have to depend on the internet while I'm upgrading. This means that your TrueNAS server can be totally offline, and you don't have to worry about the download getting interrupted for any reason. Next, it ensures that all services are shut down. This includes any of your normal services in the Services tab, as well as any of your jails or your virtual machines. Having all of this shut down ensures a smoother upgrade. And then lastly, it takes the shares offline. You'll want to coordinate this with your house, but I found that keeping those files offline and inaccessible during the upgrade ensures that there's no discrepancies between the person who has a file open and the file on the share. But it's totally up to you. I'm just sharing my reasoning for doing an offline upgrade. And this process can be applied to any upgrade for TrueNAS, not just a major version. So what do you think of TrueNAS Core? Did your upgrade go successful? Are there any new features you find in there that you really like? Is there anything missing that you think they should have added? Do you miss the shark logo? If you have any of these questions, feel free to let me know in the comments section below. Or you could hop into my live stream. I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so if you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, hop in my stream and I'd love to have you. So thanks so much for watching and till next time, stream on my friends. That guy, butterfly, am I, am I? Oh man, what is going on now? You see my events still go away? Oh yeah. Something is, yeah, this is funny. There are either a ton of falls right now, or like something is going on with Twitch. All of the services you saw just disappear. Uh, but I'll, I'll try to get caught up on these comments. Um, Jeez, there's no way that, yeah, look what's going on right now. Is, is this real life? <laughs> Looks like Twitch is having a problem with their services too. Either Twitch or Stream Elements, because it just looked like, I don't know, 50 people followed me all at once, which I doubt is true.
Oh, totally. Totally. Oh, uh, probably bots.